I'll show you where I play hide and seek. Do you want to play hide and seek? You hide and I'll find you. Here is our next top 10. This great list was sent to us by Simone Young from York. Here is her take on the top 10 most haunted buildings owned by the National Trust. Please do subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted every time we post a video. Feel free to share and also leave a comment below. Number 1 Blickling Hall in Norfolk Blickling Hall in Norfolk was built in 1616, the Jacobean Hall and its impressive history can be explored any day of the week. Explore Blickling's fascinating and significant collections, but there is a more sinister side to this grand Norfolk residence, it is home to one of history's most famous phantoms, Anne Boleyn. Blickling Hall stands on the site of an older medieval manor, which is thought to have been her birthplace. Anne Boleyn was famously beheaded, on the orders of her husband Henry VIII, when he became frustrated that she didn't bear him a son and heir. Now her headless ghost is said to return every year on the 19th of May, the anniversary of her execution. It is said that, as night falls, Anne Boleyn's ghost rides up to the house, in a coach drawn by a headless horseman, with her own head on her lap. Number 2 Buckland Abbey, in Norfolk Could Buckland Abbey, be haunted by the doomed spirit of, Sir Francis Drake? Sir Francis Drake lived in glory as a national hero. But his spirit is not a happy one, and his ghost is said to haunt his Devon home. The house was built on the site of the former abbey and was sold to Sir Francis Drake in 1580. He made Buckland his home after returning to England after his three-year circumnavigation of the globe on the Golden Hind. A pact with the devil, but while Sir Francis was regarded as a national hero, many locals feared him and believed he had supernatural powers. Some said that he had only defeated the Spanish Armada because he had made a pact with the devil. Number 3 Corfe Castle In Dorset A story of treachery, murder and a phantom on the battlements. A woman in white, believed to have performed an act of treason during the civil war is said to stalk the battlements at Corfe. This dramatic ruined fortress in southern Dorset is associated with stories of murder, war and ghosts. One of the more grisly legends is that of the murder of an 18-year-old Anglo-Saxon heir to the throne, Edward the Martyr. Killed by his stepmother, the poor soul was slain, in the grounds of the castle at the orders of his stepmother Queen Elfrida. She wanted to bring about the succession of her own son, Ethelred, later known as the Unready. In the 13th century King John imprisoned 22 captured Frenchmen in the Corfe dungeons, and left them to starve to death. While in 1327, Edward II was imprisoned at Corfe Castle prior to being murdered. During the Civil War, Corfe Castle was the home of the Royalist Banks family, who managed to repel repeated attempts to take the castle by Cromwell's Roundheads. But an act of betrayal in 1645 allowed the Roundheads to smuggle in their own soldiers inside the walls. They then attacked from within and without at the same time, and finally seized control. Later that year they blew up parts of the castle to stop it becoming an opposition stronghold again. Ever since, the ghostly figure of a headless woman in white is reported, it is said to be the woman who betrayed the banks has been seen. Stalking the walls and battlements. Number 4 Croft Castle in the West Midlands Croft Castle, could it, indeed be the most haunted house in the Midlands? The spirit of Welsh freedom fighter Owain Glyndora is one of six ghosts said to still walk the halls of Croft Castle in the West Midlands. There are said to be a total of seven spectres in residence at this ancient Herefordshire fortress. The most imposing of these is a seven-foot figure of a man clad in a leather jerkin. He is believed to be the ghost of Welsh freedom fighter Owain Glyndora, who the Croft family are descended from. In addition, members of staff have reported many strange occurrences. 
These include hearing the cry of a wailing baby and catching sight of a spectral figure wearing a grey doublet and hose. There have also been reports of a woman wearing crinoline, and a close-fitting cap seen gazing from a window. She is believed to be the ghost of a member of the Croft family who once held an increasingly desperate vigil in the house. As she waited for money to be sent home by a relative in Ireland. This ghost has been seen in several locations. One person claims that they once entered a room at Croft Castle to meet a friend. The friend jumped up and asked to be introduced to the lady who had followed her in. But, of course, there was no one there. Number 5 Dunster Castle, in Somerset The Phantom Soldiers, and a Terrifying Presence, at Dunster Castle Floating lights, strange apparitions and skeletons found chained together, in the dungeon at Dunster Castle in Somerset Dunster Castle is full of ghosts, and those that work at this ancient Norman fortress, report many strange experiences these range from peculiar sensations, inexplicable events and sightings of ghostly figures, to other, sinister sensations that sometimes seem only perceptible to dogs. In the area of the 17th century stable block, which now houses the shop, various staff members say that they have seen a man, dressed in green walking through only to disappear without trace. There have also been reports of a mysterious green light that bobs across the shop before disappearing. Many people have complained about a menacing, uncomfortable mood here leading some visitors to ask directly whether anyone had been murdered there. In the stock room, displays fall over without any obvious reason. And unopened boxes have been found to have been ruined by a mysterious brown, sticky gunge and strange voices, have been heard on occasion. Elsewhere, in the blue kitchen, a volunteer was deeply shaken when a disembodied, naked human foot appeared in front of him and several visitors and staff have reported hearing men's voices and loud footsteps late at night in areas of the castle they know to be empty. One cleaner said that she was confronted by the apparition of a man in an old-fashioned military uniform, in an area of the castle that was later found out to have been a dormitory for troops during the Civil War. But perhaps the most unusual ghost story from Dunster, concerns the remains of a seven-foot-tall prisoner that was found manacled by the wrists and ankles, along with several other skeletons in a deep dungeon beneath the gatehouse. Even in broad daylight the place where these skeletons were found, is dark and gloomy. Dogs seem particularly troubled by some kind of sinister presence at this site and refuse to climb the steps near to where the bodies were found. Number 6. Felbrig Hall. In Norfolk, the ghostly presence at Felbrigg Hall, Norfolk, is linked to a tragic death, and an unquenchable thirst for the written word. Former Felbrigg Hall resident, William Vintum III, was obsessed with books. He is believed to still visit his magnificent library at Felbrigg Hall, in order to read all the books he didn't have time to whilst he was alive. William Vintum inherited the hall in 1749. In 1809 a fire broke out in a friend's London library. William couldn't bear to see the books burn and risked his life rescuing precious volumes. He was badly injured in the flames and died a few weeks later. But his ghost is still seen in the library at Felbrigg catching up on his reading. Staff and volunteers report seeing William sitting at the library table or relaxing in a library chair. However, according to at least one source, the ghost will only appear when a particular combination of books is placed on the library table. Number 7 Ham House In Surrey The ghosts of Ham House, in Surrey The sinister presence of a ruthlessly ambitious former occupant, is at the center of paranormal activity at Ham House in Surrey. The sound of footsteps and an inexplicable scent of roses have been reported at Ham House in Surrey. Glimpses of mysterious characters or Around this place has won it the reputation of being one of our most haunted places. At the center of it all seems to be the restless spirit of Elizabeth Murray, Duchess of Lord Erdale. She inherited Ham House from her father. In 1655, in life Elizabeth was ambitious and ruthless. She played a dangerous political game by being friends with both Charles II and Oliver Cromwell. Her aim was to guarantee herself a place of influence, with whoever ended up in power. She was equally strident in her personal life, taking family members to court if they crossed her. 
When her first husband died suddenly she quickly married the recently widowed, John Maitland, 1st Earl of Lord Erdale. Some speculated darkly about how the suspiciously close deaths of both her husband and the Earl's wife facilitated Elizabeth's rise further up the social ladder. But, in the end, she ran out of luck. After the death of her second husband came financial problems. This, along with ill health, forced Elizabeth to confine herself to a single ground floor apartment at Ham House. It's on the ground floor where ghostly events seem to be concentrated. Many visitors report a strange oppressive atmosphere in the room. Pets seem reluctant to enter. There is also a large looking glass dating from Elizabeth's time that some people say they are too scared to glance into. Inexplicably afraid of what or whom they might see staring back. In fact, so powerful is the force that dominates the room that staff have been known to mutter, good afternoon your ladyship before entering, just to be on the safe side. In addition, a woman in black, believed to be Elizabeth, has been seen on the stairs nearby. But Elizabeth isn't the only spirit to haunt Ham House. The ghostly screams of a suicidal young nobleman, who fell in love with and was rejected by a servant girl have also been heard at the property. Number 8 Newton House, in Carmarthenshire. Orts of ghosts at Newton House, Carmarthenshire, are linked to a brutal crime of passion, people have reported strange sightings and happenings. Many peculiar and unsettling reports of ghostly activity have come out of Newton House in Carmarthenshire. The 17th century building enveloped by a Victorian fake it is set in an extensive landscape park. In the 1980s a TV crew stayed overnight at this lonely property. Their aim was to try and capture some evidence to support the many stories of ghosts and strange happenings at the property although they were unable to record anything, at one point a cameraman swears that he felt an invisible pair of hands squeezing his throat. On other occasions, staff members have reported hearing muffled voices when they know that they are alone. Lights switch on and off when the house is empty and locked up. There are also a number of mysterious cold spots. And from time to time there is the unmistakable aroma of pipe or cigar smoke where no one is smoking. One possible source of all this paranormal activity is the murder of Lady Eleanor Carvendish. Lady Eleanor was the cousin or sister of the lady of the house in the 1720s. She was forced to marry a man she didn't love. Their marriage was a disaster and eventually she ran away from him, to seek refuge with her family at Newton House. But her enraged suitor followed burst into the house and strangled her to death in the very room where the cameraman felt hands around his throat. Number 9 Spring Hill House In Londonderry The real story of Casper the ghost Being haunted by a friendly spirit who loves children Left alone after her husband's suicide, a kindly spirit has appeared to some of our youngest visitors at Spring Hill, Londonderry a sad, tormented soul seemingly unable to rest, has appeared many times to staff and visitors here, particularly children. In 1816 a seriously depressed George Lennox Cunningham committed suicide, leaving his second wife Olivia to bring up their children. She also had to live with the guilt and grief of being unable to save her husband from his demons. Her ghost is said to roam the house to this day. But most consider Olivia a benign presence who is particularly fond of children, often choosing to appear to the youngest in the house. Unusually, most sightings seem to take place during the day, and she has been seen walking through the house, or standing quietly on the stairs. Almost all aspects of her haunting seem to be peaceful. And there is only one slightly unsettling story, relating to a wooden cot that Olivia used for her children. During the Second World War, US soldiers billeted at Spring Hill complained of a strange knocking noise coming from the night nursery. They asked for the cot to be removed. It was loaned to the Amar Museum and the knocking stopped. But after the end of the war and the return of the cot the phantom knocking was heard once again. Number 10 Treasurer's House In Yorkshire By the look of you, you've seen the Romans. Treasurer's House Yorkshire, the marching Roman military phantom seen here may be our oldest known ghosts. Many people have reported seeing the ghosts of Roman soldiers in the cellars of Treasurer's House. The best known account comes from a retired policeman, Harry Martindale. Before he joined the police Henry worked as an engineer. 
One day, aged 18, he was installing a central heating boiler in the cellars at Treasurer's house. Soldiers emerged from the wall, and suddenly, he heard the sound of a trumpet and saw the top of a soldier's helmet apparently emerging from the wall against which he was working. He leapt from his ladder, watching in disbelief as behind the trumpet play applauded a horse, and about 20 soldiers walking two abreast. They were carrying lances, round shields and short swords. According to Harry, the men looked tired and dirty. Terrified, he shot upstairs. He bumped into the curator who said, before Henry could utter a single word, by the look of you, you've seen the Romans, historical detail, interestingly, Henry's account of the men carrying round shields was at odds with contemporary ideas, about how Roman soldiers were equipped. They were generally believed to have only used rectangular shields and some used this fact to discredit his story. However, later research has revealed that during the 4th century AD the 6th legion was withdrawn from York and replaced by troops that carried distinctive, round shields. In addition, later archaeological research, revealed evidence of a Roman road 18 inches below the current cellar floor.